friends welcome back my name is Anna and this is my knitting channel where I talk about basically my knitting life and I'm really glad that you're here first off I just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support that you showed after the loss of our you Bess and um, the loss of Dee Dee's lambs it was just really heartwarming and um, I felt very blessed by all the love I was shown and all the um, stories of similar or worse experiences you personally have gone through. And I just wanted to say thank you for putting yourself out there and leaving a comment. And yes, I just felt really cared for. If you're new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I discussed that more in the my last episode if you skip right to the end um, to the farm news and spin me a yarn portion you will hear all about um, the really difficult month that we had um, the past month now has been really upbeat um, we haven't had the same kind of losses and we've had a lot of good things happen so I will share a bit more about that at the end of the podcast First off, I'm wearing the um, Villa Vest, which was just released. I was um, paid to write this pattern as a commission for Taproot magazine. And I will be showing you the magazine in the acquisitions section of this episode. Um, it is available, I believe, as a digital download on Ravelry or um, you can still purchase this issue of the magazine through the Taproot website. It is a cloudy and cooler day today, but it probably is still too warm to wear this, so we'll see how long I can keep this on while I'm talking to you all. I have a lot to share today and not a lot of time to do it, so I am just going to get right into it with finished objects. First finished object is one you've seen if you've been here for a while, you've seen quite a few times. This is the Musselberg hat by Solda Teague. It is a simple but genius pattern where you simply cast on a small number of stitches in the round, increase to your final circumference, continue knitting in the round as a tube, and then decrease at the end, not forgetting to weave in your ends before you finish your decreases. Then you take your long tube and you turn it inside out into itself, and you end up with a hat. So don't know if I will put it on. My hair is not cooperating today, so I don't want to um, mess it up. And uh, I'm sure many of you have seen this design before. You've seen it before if you've watched this podcast. I continue to make these as a um, background project or my travel knitting. So I take whatever single skeins I have and make up hats. So this one is going into my gift box. This yarn was a gift from the Creative Knitter. Um, Stephanie sent me a beautiful box of yarn. And this one is fingering weight sock yarn and it is called Plant Lady. And it is this beautiful spring green. So that is the end of that project and will be a gift for, haven't decided yet, but whoever looks good in green. Uh, my second finished object is one that you have seen before, but um, it looked quite a bit different the last time you saw it. So this is a new blanket and triangle shawl design. I just released a, a um, another design with this similar construction, and so now I'm completely hooked on making these blankets a sweet way and have um, lots more ideas of other ones to make. This is a center out seamless blanket. So you start with a small little square worked flat 
and then you work in the round in a simple stockinette and eyelet. I could not find any more of this color at the yarn store that carries this wool that was at the Fiber Nook in Edmonton. Um, Leslie runs a beautiful yarn store that they've just expanded their space and their yarn selection. I haven't been since they opened up the second part of their store, but I'm sure it's quite amazing. It seems like in Alberta we just get um, bigger and bigger yarn stores, which is fantastic. <clears throat> you don't feel like you're stuck in a closet shopping for yarn. So anyway, I could not find this color, which is called Anthracite, but they did have a skein of this one that was very close called Dark Grey, and I was hoping that it would make a more seamless transition there, but actually I quite like how it turned out. And then you transition to the yellow, which is called Wheat. This yarn is um, BC Garn Bios Shetland, and it is a um, fingering weight. It comes in 50 gram hanks, and so I used two hanks for this center portion, one hank for this border, and two hanks for the lace edging. So this little chevron makes a nice scalloped edge. It also impacts how these eyelets work out. So it almost gives a scalloped edge there, even though if you had done these eyelets without this lace edging, they would lay flat. So it is a almost 53 by 53 inch square or you can fold it in half as a triangle and wear it as a shawl or you can wrap it around like a triangle scarf. It's a little bit smaller than I would like for wearing that way because the ends do tuck in but they, if you continue to wear it, they might um, work themselves loose but it's a really beautiful um, shape. And I like how you can see the three colors there. So yeah, I'm really happy with this one. And I am ready to have it test knitted. It's been tech edited. If you're interested in test knitting, I have already drafted up the email that I will send to my newsletter subscribers. So if you um, have, when I upload this, video. I probably have already sent that test knit out, but if you were not already on the newsletter list for test knit calls, which you can do through my website, which is linked below, just send me an email and um, I would be glad to add you. It's quite a commitment, these test knits. It takes a lot of yardage and a lot of time, so um, I don't usually reject any test knitters who are interested in one size of big shawl. It's not like a garment test knit where I might have multiple testers per size so it becomes quite a large group very fast. This one it's just one size so I don't mind adding many many testers for this shawl slash blanket. I think it would be a beautiful baby blanket also. Um, yeah, so I got these original two anthracites hanks, this color, from my mom who had bought them to hold together with another yarn, which she ended up not liking how that looked, so she gave it to me. And then I bought this color, the the dark gray and the wheat myself so I bought three hanks and they were $14 each so that came to about $42 that I had to put into this so far not including tech editing and time I used four millimeter needles actually I'm not sure about that I the pattern recommends four millimeter usually I recommend higher than what I used. 
I think I used three and a half millimeter, which is a US four, I believe. And my gauge was 20 stitches per 34 rounds in the stockinette in the round. There are a few little quirky things in this one. Um, number one is picking up stitches into these eyelets that you create. You create a flat square with eyelets along the edges and then you pick up into them. That's a little finicky and odd if you've never, um, you probably haven't ever done anything like that before. It's um, a little quirky. And then the rest of it, like you're just increasing along these increase points and doing eyelets every so often. Um, that's pretty simple. These are just eyelets with color changes. And then the final lace is fairly simple itself too. It's not too, it's just worked on right side on every other row. And I mean, you're looking at it the whole time you're looking at the right side. So it's easy to read your work and it is increased along this increase point and yeah I include some directions in how to bind off so that your edge is stretchy and that you so that you can block it out nicely um, another thing I enjoy about this pattern is that it actually looks okay on the reverse also it's not atrocious so if you're wearing it as using it as a blanket then when the right wrong side flips over it's not hideous so that is called the field edge blanket um, and I chose that name because the way it is simple in the middle reminds me of all the monocrop crops that grow around where we live um, canola fields wheat and they all look um, very even and very clean and very straightforward but then along the edges of those fields where the tiller can't reach there's a mess usually a mess of weeds and wildflowers and shrubs so there'll be kind of a tangled mess of flowers and seed heads and leaves branches so I kind of felt like that um, had some echoes of the difference between the two So I th I'm not sure about the deadline for that. I think I said six weeks to for the test knitting um, timeline. That's all of my finished objects. For my works in progress, no, I didn't rip out a hat. This is my second version of the Musselberg black ribbed hat. So I um, talked about in previous episodes this hat that I was making for my friend's husband who had generously made a bunch of bird houses for my bluebird root and I made him a hat to say thank you. I bought, sorry, that was my timer to let my sheep back in. Uh, we, I'll talk about that at the end. But we are on serious bloat watch over here, so we don't lose any more sheep. And so that means I have to manage how long they are out on pasture. So, yeah, so I bought two hanks of wool folk far, which is a beautiful luxury yarn. It's 100% merino, it's in a uh, braided ply, and it's extremely soft. It comes... Uh, it's $27 per hank at Statement Junkie in Sherwood Park where I bought this. Um, I only needed one of them for the other hat that I did. So my husband, who is not generally knit worthy and not usually interested in having any knits, actually really liked that hat that I made. So I'm using the second hank to make him a hat and I'm very close to being done. And if you want to know more about that and how it's constructed and how I changed the Musselberg pattern to be ribbed and it will only 
Um, so it will end here. It won't continue in the big tube. So if you want to learn more about that, um, I talk about it in the last two or three episodes. So this is my new travel knitting project. I have, oh no, I was in the middle, I was not in the middle of a row when I started this podcast and then I started knitting while I was talking and now I am in the middle of a row so I will just keep going to the end so that I can show you what I'm doing here with the Kenosi tea. The Kenosi tea is based on the Kenosi tank pattern. However, I'm using a different yarn and a different gauge, so that means basically rewriting the entire thing from scratch. It's top down with um, um, in pieces. The Kenosi tank was made top down starting in pieces and then joined in the round um, but the stitch patterns are uh, reverse stockinette on either side and then the main lace panel is in lace in stockinette so because it's done in the round unless you were to alter the lace pattern to do it with the wrong side facing, which I tried and I did not enjoy. It was really difficult to read my knitting and um, it just felt very slow and cumbersome. So I wasn't gonna recommend that for, for my pattern, for other people to go through that experience. So unless you are willing to do that, then your entire knit is basically pearl and, and lace. So I don't know about you, but I don't enjoy purling if I can help it. So I asked over on my Instagram um, what people thought if they preferred purling or seaming because I could do it flat and then you would get some knitting sections because when you're working the wrong side, then you'd be knitting um, and then you'd get some rest time in between the purling and all the lace. So I asked on Instagram, um, it was pretty evenly split about who preferred purling versus who preferred seaming. Um, so I just decided to go ahead with seaming the garment and working it flat in a front and back piece. And then we will seam the sides together, pick up for the sleeves and make short sleeves. So it's a set and sleeve design, which is a really nice fit on most body types because it considers your shoulder me measurements um, and your bust measurements. So it fits your shoulders and fits your bust for most body types versus a, some other ones don't really, like a raglan yoke is notorious for not fitting very well for people who have small shoulders and a large bust. Um, and yeah, so it's going well so far, except that I realized the Kenosi tank, because it's in the round, the lace continues to extend and it actually extends around the front into the front panel. So now I've ripped back the part that I had done in the round. I had done this whole section in the round, then I ripped it back and now I'm doing that section flat. I have also this front piece here and now I'm realizing that I will either have to have the last section of lace near the bottom of the top going straight down so there'll be um, a harsh line between the front and the back and an obvious seam or I might have to join the front and back piece together in the round at the same point in order to be able to work the lace into this front section as well. So that's a little, just a bit of a glimpse into designing and how you think. I often change things thinking, oh, this would be a better way to do it, or this would be a smarter way. And then there's some unforeseen 
reason that I shouldn't have done it that way. But I don't realize that until I've already worked a bunch into a project. So that's a bummer, but I think I will just continue working my sample and see what I can, what kind of solutions I can come up with. So I'm going to work this section until I run out of room to work, continue working the lace because the work, lace extends into the reverse stockinette every other row. I'll put these ones on hold. I'll work the front to that side to this length and then I will see what I decide to do or what, what, um, solutions I come up with. So this is in concept by Katya called Dama. I got this at Statement Junkie in Sherwood Park for $11 a ball. And so far I've only used two balls for as much knitting as I've already done. So I think it will only take five to finish the shirt, five or less. And this color is, it just says 89. Comes in 50 gram balls and there's 142 yards per gram. It's quite a beautiful color, really. So I am using 3.25 millimeters to get a 20 stitch gauge in this yarn, which is supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be a sport weight. It says you're supposed to knit it at a 24 stitch gauge, but um, I wouldn't want it, like this is a 20 stitch gauge. I wouldn't want it tighter than that. It would be quite stiff, I would think, and it would be hard on my hands to knit it like that. It is cotton and cotton, mostly cotton, 85%, and a little bit of viscose and a little bit of silk. Um, it's okay. I don't know that I would design in it again, but um, it's working for what I need at the moment. That's all for my knitting projects. Um, I do have some acquisitions. I, since I last podcasted, I have gotten some books. I bought this Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible. I have one or two of these already. I often borrow them from the library too. That's why I can't remember which how many I have. I think I only have one. And this was, um, so these, this is the pattern that I used in the Field Edge blanket. And yeah, you're probably familiar with this book. It is not new, but still always inspiring. I also got this book from Nora Gowan. It is all about how to use folds to um, elevate your knits. It's really inspiring. I'm a little disappointed though because for some reason I thought it was going to be a stitch dictionary, which is my favorite kind of knitting book, but actually it's a pattern book. Um, I don't have a lot of time to knit other people's patterns, so that's not quite as useful to me, but it's still very inspiring and the way her mind works just blows my mind. This is one that I would be willing to knit. This is called Tilt and it is a skirt pattern. Basically made from a rectangle but the way it falls is really beautiful. Okay. Yeah that's the only way. The only photo we have of it modeled but that's the shape of it. This is the waistline here. Yeah, I think that would be a really interesting project to work on. And then I know I don't think I ever showed you that I got this book. This is Sheep, Shepherd and Land. This was my Christmas present, but I had to wait until April or May till it came in. It is by Anna Hunter of Longway Homestead. She produces yarn from her flock of sheep and from other flocks um, in Western Canada. And it's basically a story time from different wool producers, small wool producers in all across Canada. And it's really a great read. I really enjoyed it. 
and felt really inspired by all these shepherds who are working so hard to give us the wool that we like to knit with. I also have some fleece. 10 points if you can guess what that's from. Maybe the dirt will give it away. This is from our dog, a great Pyrenees named Wolf. And he, this is his shedding of his winter coat. I, last year I could not believe how much he lost. And I was kind of um, sad about it, about all this fiber being wasted. But uh, I have two friends, Beth from Bird and Butterfly on Instagram and Brittany from Crux Fibers, who spin yarn and were keen to get some of Wolf's fleece. So I need to send that off to them. I, I'm not going to process it because I don't want to wreck it. So it's going to smell quite a bit like dog when they open it. So sorry, ladies. Did a little costume change and got this yarn that I bought this month. This is from Statement Junkie. They had a sale on Smash Knits and a whole bunch of other dyers yarns. And um, so I picked them up. This was the only one they had left of this pink lemonade. It's all fingering weight sock yarn. And this one is Terra Nova, this green. And this one is Whisper. So these are all from Smash Knits, who is a dyer in Manitoba. And I just thought they were very beautiful together. I especially love these two together. <clears throat> that green and that pinky yellow. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. I thought maybe I would make it into a blanket. Another center up center out blanket design but I haven't decided. I always find that I want fingering weight skeins either to make things like muscle bergs or to hold it with another yarn to make it thicker so I felt like that justified this purchase. Those were on sale for $25 each from Statement Junkie. As for shop news, uh, the Seed Star Blanket is now released. Thank you very much to everyone who supported that pattern release. The Pure Top t-shirt is in testing and should be coming out in early August. Um, for summer plans and dreams, other than knitting, uh, the Bluebird Banding Route is finished now. I banded 28 baby bluebirds and was able to band every active nest. That was a pretty low number this year. I think I only had six active nests out of 135 boxes. So um, some, some years I have quite a few. Sometimes I have 20 nests and other years I have very few. So it's not always um, consistent. I don't know if bluebird numbers go up and down or if they go somewhere else, but my husband's outside um, working as he does and yeah so that is done very happy with getting that finished um, speaking of my husband <laughs> he is working on a big present for me for my birthday he's changing our little tiny house that's outside um, previous owners used it as a playhouse. My children don't personally use it as a playhouse because I think they find it too big. <clears throat> so he is changing it into a she shed and it will be my little knitting hovel. That's very exciting. It already looks so much better than it did. And I'm trying to think of, figure out colors and um, yeah, interior design and all that stuff. He's doing the 
manual labor for it and I get to make the fun decisions. And oh yeah, and I wanted to ask if anyone had any ideas or preferences of what I should knit and design next. So I feel now that I'm I've done enough things and I actually know how I like to design things and so um, it's kind of a difficult place to be in in that I feel like I don't have enough boundaries in order to make a decision so I'd like to do my new favorite top-down construction but um, I could do a textured sweater I could do a color work I could do a striped I have lots of ideas of maybe some colors striping along with um, changing textures from lace to garter. Um, so if there is anything that you would really like me to design, I'm keen to design a garment next. Probably not a cardigan, although maybe I'd be open to a design that could be both. A pullover and a cardigan so I could do two versions. Let me know what you think about that and if you're really keen to knit a certain thing especially in the deep winter so I really need to get started on things now so that I can get them tested and released in at least January. Um, I think that's it. I, I just have one recommendation this time for Sedgy Fields podcast. Sedgy Fields has been on YouTube for a really long time, um, but she just started a knitting podcast. I ran randomly YouTube suggested her to me because she had done a couple of knitting podcasts within her larger channel, and I just immediately fell in love with her. She is quirky and a little bit nerdy but super adorable. She's currently in Japan. Um, she's super smart. She knows like four languages. I think she's studying economics in Japanese while she's in Japan. So like obviously very intelligent. Um, I really like how she approaches knitting. She's a fairly new knitter so I always like that kind of perspective. Seeing things in a new light again and um yeah she's just really really adorable so i really recommend um watching her episodes she just has a few out so you could catch up really quick and other than that i guess we can move on to farm news and spin me a yarn um our summer has been good so far we've just stayed home we have a lot of work to do here um we had two kids' birthdays at the end of June. We had the end of summer busyness. Um, one of my kids went to camp. Uh, we have two more birthdays coming up in August. I turn 40. My son turns 13. My husband and I celebrate our anniversary. That all happens within um, three days. No, yes, three days. Um, so it's kind of a crazy time. I'm going away this weekend for a birthday weekend with some of my favorite ladies. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, family, family are coming this weekend. So um, it'll be a busy, crazy, busy, fun time. Uh, aside from that, we have pigs. We have two pigs that we are raising for meat. They're quite an adventure, quite hilarious, so smart. And I just hope they become a lot less cute and um, endearing nearer to the end of their lives because right now I cannot, I don't have anything to do with the butchering of the animals anyways. It's my husband's thing that he really enjoys raising them for meat and being um, independent of the grocery store in that way. I like growing the vegetables, so we kind of divide it out that way, but I will have a really hard time with cooking and eating that um, meat if these guys are 
just as cute then as they are now. They're just really smart. Like they, um, they have an electric fence and everybody else, the sheep, the dog, are scared of the fence. So they give the fence a clear, um, a, a safe distance. But the pigs know that the it's not the fence that's electric, it's the specific wire. So they'll stick their nose in between the wire where they can go, but but they'll keep the distance from the wire. Um, another thing that they do is that they save, they have a little collection. They have a little rock collection that they've been saving inside their little home. Just like, yeah heartbreaking and cute so this is a whole new adventure for us we've only ever done chickens for our meat and some chickens are adorable our laying chickens are very cute but broiler chickens aren't very they're hard to love <laughs> they're not very cute and they're yeah but um these pigs are super super cute uh another another Thing that has happened is that we've gotten 11 more sheep so before we had our terrible month of sheep losses I had been discussing with someone um, out west about getting her Shetland sheep she's doing a flock dispersal so um, we ended up going through with that and we got 11 sheep five full-grown ewes and six lambs all all the lambs except one are weaned, so one, there's one ewe and lamb pair. And right now, we are really just trying to transition them to our lush past pasture. So they were, yeah. some the full-grown ewes were on pasture, but the lambs weren't, and the um, ewe lamb pair wasn't. So we have to be really careful about how much time they get on pasture, and um, it's a slow transition over two weeks trying to get them on, on there. Um, oh, I wanted to say, I think Cookie, the cat, is pregnant. If you want to know about, more about that story, you can go to the very end of the last episode. But I, I think it's looking hopeful that she is have she does have some babies in her belly. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that um, rush through everything. And I hope I can get this edited and out to you soon. And... I just pray wherever you are that you are safe and you're not having an environmental disaster and that you are enjoying your knitting time. Till next time. Bye.